On today's episode, we're going to talk about the Constitution, more specifically, the U.S. and Germany. So let's compare the two and see if America truly is the freest freedom to ever freedom. Hello again, Lieblings. I'm Mari, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. So today we're going to talk about the U.S. Constitution as well as its German counterpart, which is called the Grundgesetz, or Basic Law. So when I came to Germany and I had to take my Leben in Deutschland, or Life in Germany, test in order to qualify for permanent residency, I had actually noticed, because some of the questions were specific about the Deutsche Grundgesetz, that a lot of it looked very similar to certain passages and amendments in the U.S. Constitution. They were familiar enough that I passed. <laughs> I didn't think much of it after that, but a subscriber did actually ask me to compare the two, and I thought, that is an awesome idea. So, here we are. <laughs> but before we get started, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Here on Adventures of Lamadi, we talk about writing, living abroad, and everything in between. So, before we go any further, I have to uh, clarify that I do not have a law degree. I studied biology and Spanish. I am not Barack Obama, who, by the way, was a constitutional law professor for the University of Chicago Law School from 1992 to 2004. I am a normal person, a normie normie, who is very, who's trying to quickly, briefly, and easily e explain my interpretation of an otherwise big and complicated topic. So for the sake of brevity, I may oversimplify some stuff. Please don't at me. Instead, if you do want more information, all of my sources I have used to create this video, I have put in the description below. So read away. So let's start with some basics. The U.S. Constitution was first drafted on September 17th, 1787 and became effective on March 4th, 1789. It is actually the successor to the Articles of the Confederation and the Perpetual Union written by the Second Constitutional Congress in the mid-1776 to late 1777. It is considered to be the first permanent constitution of its kind and has since been the influence of later constitutions all over the world. Now, it's not the first constitution, it's the first permanent constitution of its kind. It's, it's, it's FYI, because I know I'm going to get comments on that. <laughs> but um, the U.S. Constitution itself is made up of seven articles as well as 27 amendments. The first 10 amendments are called the Bill of Rights. The Constitution also dictates that the U.S. is a constitutional presidential republic with three branches of government, executive, judicial, and legislative. The Grundgesetz for the former West Germany was approved on May 8, 1949, with the signatures of the occupying Western allies of World War II on the 12th of May. It came into effect on May 23rd of that same year. It is called a basic law and not a constitution because this document it was considered to be an interim document until Germany would be reunified and thus a unified Germany would come up with a proper constitution that would override the basic law as per Article 146 of the Grundgesetz. So the Grundgesetz itself uh, had some notes from, has some extracts from the Weimar Constitution. And there's also, I think, some influence from the Frankfurt documents, which was the result of the London Six Power Conference, which consists of the three Western occupying powers, which is U.S., United Kingdom, and France, and the three Western neighbors of Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg, as they debated the political future of the three Western occupied zones of Germany. The Grundgesetz itself has 146 articles and dictates that Germany is a federal parliamentary republic with three branches of government, executive, judicial, and legislative. And yes, that is in the Life in Germany test. So what I do find it really interesting is, first off, that if you look at the political climate at the time that these constitutions, for the sake of, of simplicity, constitutions were created... In the U.S., the inspiration for the Bill of Rights especially were written to essentially give the metaphorical middle finger to their time as a British colony. So if you look at those first 10 amendments, you will see that those rights, that we actually had those denies, we actually had those rights denied to us. So the goal was as a new country, we wanted to be better than the English towards our own citizens. On the other hand, Germany's Grundgesetz was created in the shadow of both World War II and the Holocaust, and the country made a very thorough list, remember, 146 articles, to try and create a government that would be immune to the situation that allowed for the rise of Hitler in the first place. It's all really fascinating. And so in order to kind of go 
a little more in depth, but also not make this a really long and boring episode. I thought, how about going through the Bill of Rights, so the first 10 amendments, and see if Germany has those as well. I also I also figured it would be poignant to, uh, given U.S.'s uh, current political climate and our claim that we are the freest country to ever freedom because of our constitution. So I thought, let's see if Germany can compete. So I'm going to do a lot of reading. <laughs> um, so I apologize for that. So um, let's start with the First Amendment. Freedoms, petitions, and assembly. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Yeah. So... What does the Deutsche Grundgesetz say? Well, in terms of freedom of religion, we can look at Article 4. Uh, freedom of faith, of consciousness, and freedom to profess a religion or philosophical creed shall be inviolable. The undisturbed practice of religion shall be guaranteed. No person shall be compelled against this, his conscience to render military service involving the use of arms. Details shall be regulated by federal law, as well as extracts from the German Constitution of the 11th of August 1919, the Weimar Constitution, that's Articles 136, 137, 138, 139, and 141. In terms of freedom of speech and press, we have Article 5. Every person shall have the right freely to express and disseminate his opinions and speech, writing and pictures, and to inform himself without hindrance from generally accessible sources. Freedom of the press and freedom of reporting by means of broadcast and film shall be guaranteed. There shall be no censorship. In terms of freedom of assembly, we have Article 8. All Germans shall have the right to assemble peacefully, peacefully and unarmed without prior notification or permission. In the case of outdoor assemblies, this right may be restricted by or pursuant to a law. And the freedom of petition against the government, that is Article 17. Every person shall have the right individually or jointly with others to address written requests or complaints to competent authorities and to the legislature. Yeah, um... Yeah, we have it. <laughs> In terms of the First Amendment, Germany has it as well. Now, Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. <laughs> as opposed to the right to bear arms. <laughs> I saw what I did there. <laughs> a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Obviously, I have not found anything similar to this in German basic law, but like I said, these laws were created based on the political climate at the time and what was considered vital. The right to gun ownership, as far as I know, was never threatened in Germany. It has always been legal, uh, considering it's always used as a tool for hunting. Uh, so I, I think just the overall German cultural mindset, it's, there was never a need for an amendment for, to, to state something that's essentially obvious and automatic, I feel like. But it was not a right in the in in as a british colony and there were very serious consequences if we were caught with weaponry so that's kind of why we have it why it was made at the time it has not aged well i know i know i know <laughs> the third amendment quartering of soldiers no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner nor in time of war but in a manner to be prescribed by law yeah, we'll get into that in a moment. We're just going to go on ahead to the Fourth Amendment, which is search and arrest. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. And no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. So I think both of these amendments uh, are kind of covered in the art Article 13 of the German Grundgesetz, which is the home is inviolable. Uh, searches may be authorized only by a judge or when time is of the essence by other authorities designated by the laws and may be carried out only in the manner that they're prescribed. There's a lot more to Article 13, and I'm just only reading those two, but there's also Article 10. The privacy of correspondence, post, and telecommunications shall be inviolable. Restrictions may be ordered only pursuant to a law if the restriction serves to protect the free democratic basic order of the existence or security of the Federation or of the Land. The law may provide that the person affected shall not be informed of the restriction, and that 
that recourse to the court shall be replaced by review of the case by agencies and auxiliary agencies appointed by the legislature. Yeah. All right. The Fifth Amendment, which... Uh, I feel like anybody who's watched any, like, American TV show or movie, you hear about, like, pleading the fifth. This is the fifth. Rights in a criminal case. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or in the militia when in actual service in time of war or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without compensation. So, first we have Article 17A, which is the restriction, basic, so the restriction of basic rights in specific instances, and that's having to do with military service. Uh, laws regarding military and alternative service may provide that the basic right of members of the armed forces and of alternative service freely to express and disseminate their opinions and speech, writing and pictures, first clause of the first sentence of paragraph one of Article 5, the basic right of assembly, Article 8, and the right of petition, Article 17, insofar as it permits the submission of requests or complaints jointly with others, be restricted during their period of military or alternative service and laws regarding defense including protection of civilian population may provide for restriction of basic rights of freedom of movement article 11 and inviolable inviability of the home article 13 it's kind of i feel like it's kind of a stretch it it is like i said it, it's they're similar in terms of like you know like when you are part of the military or you know serving in in some kind of force there is some restrictions to overall basic rights but or there there's some kind of like you have some rights but obviously like there's some exceptions to certain things because you are you know doing performing public service it's like i said it's it's a bit of a stretch but that was the one that I kind of kind of force Sorry. <laughs> all right. The Sixth Amendment, the right to a fair trial. In, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have assistance of counsel in, for his defense. Um, this article 19 there's also going back to restriction of basic laws there's legal remedies so um in so in so far under this basic law a basic right may be restricted by or pursuant to the law such law may be applied generally and not merely to a single case in addition the law must specify the basic right affected and the article in which appears in no case may the essence of a basic right be affected the basic right shall also apply to domestic legal persons to the extent that the nature of such rights permits should any person's rights be violated by public authority he may have recourse to the courts if no other jurisdiction has been established recourse shall be to the ordinary courts, the second sentence of paragraph two, article ten, shall not be affected by this paragraph. Y yeah, I, I feel like that was the, those were the those were the closest. Um, are we going to the Seventh Amendment, which is rights in civil cases, in suits by common law where the value in controversy shall exceed twenty dollars, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. There is no German equivalent. I, I, there's, I, I have not seen a section on civil cases in German basic law, but I mean, I could easily be wrong. If I am, please let me know which article that is, because I mean, it was 146. So the, the majority of those articles also have to do with just like, you know, how the government is built, the the, the distribution of powers and, and, you know, what our articles do uh, as opposed to our amendments. So yeah, if, if, I'm, if I'm wrong about that and with civil cases, let me know in the comments below. So, Eighth Amendment, bails, fines, and punishment. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. So, part, um, uh, Article 19, Paragraph 2, in no case may the essence of a basic right be affected. All persons shall be equal before the law. Men and women shall have equal rights.
The state shall promote the actual implementation of equal rights for women and men and take steps to eliminate disadvantages that now exist. No person shall be favored or disfavored because of sex, par parentage, race, language, homeland, and origin, faith, or religious or political opinions. No person shall be disfavored because of disability. So I feel like it's it, it, they, these are similar only because it is like, no cruel and unusual punishment should be inflicted as well as everybody should be considered equal before the law. Obviously, given the current U.S. political climate, <laughs> that's not the case. But that is what it does say in our Constitution, and we should be following that. So, Ninth Amendment, rights retained by the people. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. So, this is actually a tricky amendment to interpret. No one has really um, sat down and and agreed on this one <laughs> because at the time it was written our forefathers knew that we couldn't actually list all of our rights so this was kind of a blanket statement to kind of say that if there wasn't a, a right that was not mentioned before but it is a right that is accepted by the people it doesn't make it less important or less less valid so to put it plainly there is no german version of this but only because if you were going to have a country that was going to be thorough and make sure to list every possible right it would be germany <laughs> So I feel like they wouldn't necessarily need a comment like this because they would go ahead and, and go ahead and list list the rights because that's just what Germans do. I don't I don't know, but there, there's no German there's no German equivalent to this. And last but not least, the Tenth Amendment, which states rights: the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So. Everything I have named before it falls under the basic rights section of the Deutsche Grundgesetz. This part is in a different section that has to do with like distribution of power, like like the building of the government. So this is Article Twenty Eight. Uh, municipalities must be guaranteed the right to regulate all local affairs on their own responsibility within the limits prescribed by the law, within the limits. Of their functions designated by a law, associations of municipalities shall also have the right of self-government in accordance with the laws. The guarantee of self-government shall extend to the basis of financial autonomy. These bases shall include the right of municipalities to a source of tax revenues based upon economic ability and the right to establish the rates at which these sources shall be taxed. There's a lot more to Article 28, but we're just I'm just reading that part. So there's also Article 29. Revisions of the existing divisions into Lenda shall be affected by a federal law, which which must be confirmed by referendum. The affected lenda shall be afforded an opportunity to be heard. Again, there's more to Article 29, but tr I'm trying to keep this brief. There's also Article 30. Except as otherwise provided or permitted by this basic law, the exercise of state powers and the discharge of state function is a matter for the lenda. And Article 31, federal law shall take precedence over land law. So obviously, <laughs> this is just the tip of the iceberg in a breakdown of the U.S. Constitution and the German Golden Gazettes. Again, what I have found so interesting is you can clearly see the difference, even in the wording, what was important to the people at the time that these documents were written, whether it was the 1780s or the 1940s. Whew. So what do you guys think? Did, did you find it interesting or did I, did I bore you to tears? If I bored you to tears, I'm really sorry. And, and if so, why are you still watching? <laughs> If this, this show bored you, go away, go away. This is for the people who are interested in this nerdy stuff. <laughs> Anyway, whew, thanks for joining me today. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know you'd like content like this and you want to see more. Definitely leave me a comment if you have any questions, comments, or topics you would like to see on this channel. The God Queen is available in both ebook and paperback. I have all the links for the book in the description below. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And that's it for today. Until next time, adieu!